tonight on The Apprentice. Lots of passion, lots of energy, and let's have lots of fun. I'm in this to win. Ah, you have the fish in the chip, sir. I am who I am. People like you talk to talk, but you don't know when to stop. If it fails, it comes back to me. It was lacking from Sandra. I don't find that funny at all. He's going to let them hang themselves. Connor felt very strongly about it. It's weird when you look at me and say that. <laughs> it's weird me saying it. Pardon! Your dinner's ready! It was a mistake. I just don't understand it. This is turning out to be a complete cringe fest. Uh, Get up those stairs now! I certainly think I could make a good Spielberg. It was memorable for all the wrong reasons. Brilliant. You saved the day. Martin, your dinner's ready! OK, so let me finish. Seriously, what is this? <gasps> oh, It's as funny as a funeral. It's the way the cookie crumbles. Good morning and welcome to News Talk Breakfast with me, Ivan Yates, and Chris Dunham. Thanks, Ivan. Good news for the economy this morning with a jobs boost for the Southwest. Bill Cullen wants to invest in a new business. To fight for it, Ireland's entrepreneurial elite head for Dublin. The €200,000 deal is on the table, and the boss is in the boardroom. It will be their business plan, his money. And to get it, they need to go through a punishing selection process. I'm here to win it. I think that I'd be an ideal business partner for Bill. 16 potential business partners, 12 tough weeks, one life-changing opportunity. Doing it the hard way, Bill Cullen went from market stall to market leader. He's now on the hunt for a new money-spinning venture. This will be their idea. I'm helping finance it, and I'm helping to push them. It's showtime. I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of tension at times. What, what is the setup? Because I don't know. Passion. Stop. Just Chris, one second. Don't now. speak to me like that ever. Now. Enthusiasm. So you be quiet and you be quiet. And persistence. Give us a euro. That's what it's about. Push, push, push. That's it. I feel like I've just been spanked. Speak to me. Get over the masters. Oh, what are the divine. Are you saying I put no I, ideas I, on the table? No, I... Because you, you didn't offer very much yourself. I'm a real-life entrepreneur. I can make things happen. Young person, young business, and 200 grand to work with. It's going to put wheels under the business. It's business. You're fired. You are fired. You are fired. a.m. and the candidates have been summoned by Bill to meet him at Ardmore Studios where he will brief them on this week's task. Good morning candidates. Good morning Bill. And today we're here in the famous Ardmore Studios where Cine Electric has provided services for the Irish film and television industry for more than 30 years. Television mainly survives in advertising. And even with the big shift in how businesses promote themselves these days, it's the TV advert that's considered to be the most effective. So with that in mind, I'll hand you over to Emer McCormack, the head of marketing for Just Eat. Emer. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, morning Emer. Our customers order everything from fish and chips to Thai to Indian. We are able to deliver this service due to our unique piece of technology. Essentially, we provide each restaurant with a small box that enables them to communicate with the customers via our website. We have one main obstacle, and that obstacle is the fact that a majority of customers still continue to order takeaway over the phone. So, in order to make this transition, we would like you to create a 30-second television ad to communicate the benefits of ordering online. It's important to us that the ad is edgy, fun and contemporary, but most of all, that your personality and humour shows throughout the ad. The very best of luck to you all. So, advertising is all about persuasion. Trust me, some of you have still to persuade me to invest in your business. Both teams now have two days to storyboard, script, shoot and edit a 30-second television advert. Each team has been given 300 euro seed money, access to a casting agent, and a number of pre-arranged locations to shoot in. 
The winning team will be the one that creates an advert that Just Eat deems successful in encouraging people away from the phone and to order their takeaway online instead. I'm definitely up for this as project manager. Um, I've obviously the marketing background. Have you done storyboards and stuff? I've done storyboards. Uh, so I, I would really love this. I think that really it's only a case of leading this particular team. Put yourself aside. I'd maybe go with yourself, Morris, versus Sandra. If I was to put myself aside, I'd say Sandra. That's a tie, so what do you think, Sandra? Are we... Are we... I'd be happy to go with Mars, the fact that you have okay. done storyboards okay. before okay. you have yeah. a background Perfect. in marketing. OK, okay. great. Yeah. All right. So we're all behind you. So, right. yeah, brilliant. Masters graduate and Limerick native Morris, who has worked in the family catering business, wins the vote to project manage the task. It's very difficult to, to see what Bill is looking for at this stage because we've all been taken down pegs. I'm in this to win and if anybody thinks differently, they can come up and tell me that themselves. I'm happy that Morris is um, project manager for the last few weeks. Um, he has been um, somewhat kind of in a little bit of a shadow in a lot of tasks, um, so I think it's important for him to take this role. Over in Team Spirit's workroom, the appointment of a project manager is still on the agenda. I don't mind doing project manager on this one. I've never done TV ads by the parachute jump, so, you know. Again, I'm happy to step up again, no problem leading and you know, bringing ideas to the table. I'm happy enough to put my name forward as well, perhaps not as strongly as the previous two. Um, I felt more strongly about them than I would this. Whatever. Well, you did the last one, I'll do this one. And, I and just... I'm happy to back you on the way. As we said, we're all going to be pulling away, so... OK, I'll do it, that's grand, right, no problem. Uncontested, Eugene takes on the role of PM for Team Spirit. I think I am one of the strongest candidates here. I think I can pull off my business idea very well. I am who I am. And uh, if they like me, I think I can go on and win The Apprentice this year. I particularly would like to be where we're scripting, because I, I do like words, I like putting concepts together, and I like mm -hmm. writing. Yeah, I'm happy yeah. enough to direct. Um, I, I put myself forward for directing as well. I think I'll have a good eye for how I want things to work and how we envisage a final product as well. But you're just after saying a minute ago that you didn't really want to take this out because you've no experience in it. Like. As much experience as one another from the last day. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. OK. All right. If you don't want to be project manager, why would you want to be a director? Um, what do you want to direct? A couple at home. Her husband says, oh, she, you're brilliant at cooking. You can whistle something together in the next 20 minutes. Onto the laptop. Da -da -da -da. Food arrives at the back door, just eat, da -da -da. And she serves it up and brings it in as if she's been preparing it. Suddenly, out of their computer, pops uh, a faulty Italian. Ah, you have the fish and the chips, sir. And before they know it, they just say, oh, fish and chips the fish and chips lands on their table. We don't have a comparison of what the difficulty is. Like they're, the, key, the key thing they want to get across here is, is the ease is of ordering it online via the phone. Versus phone. Yeah, 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 to yeah. get away from the phone. My idea was like, you know, dad's at home and he's responsible for the dinner. They've got kids. One has pizza, one has fish and chip, other is Thai and some Italian for her. And, um, you know, she's amazed by everything that he's done. And he just winks at the kids and says, just eat honey. Joanne has a lot of experience in the media and also with putting together advertising and marketing campaigns. However, she's playing it safe. I don't like that. That's a bit of coasting to me. I'm thinking of having a man with a laptop on his knee and the dog sitting beside him and he goes over and starts fiddling with the TV and the dog is still beside the laptop and he's playing with it with his paw and he actually manages to order a Chinese and one of them says, well, I told you it's simple. Even Buster can do it. Just eat.ie, so simple, it just makes sense. Does a dog represent just eat.ie? I don't think so. I think the dog idea doesn't fit into the concept of what we're supposed to be doing. I just think we need to put our heads together rather than going off barking in silly directions. I think we should all have a little bark together and see what we can come up with. I still so, think the domestic evening scene on a weekend yeah. is the one to go for, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with Connor in that that's mm -hmm. the safe option. Look at the, the it's weekends. It's not that I want to play it safe, it's just it depicts no, 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 what they're finished. about. I'm not, I'm not, and I'm, and I'm, I'm agreeing with you, Connor. Yeah. I managed Connor in the last task as PM, and I actually used up all my energy managing him. Connor is constantly pulling away with every bit of feedback that I give him, whether it's positive, whether I disagree with him. He takes it as a negative. Are you hell bent on using a dog for the. I'm not hell bent on it, it's only an idea that I wanted to put out and just let right. you dissect and see where it goes. If you like that idea and you think that it may be possible to hire some dog in to do it, so. 
um, there's a laptop and the internet's on yeah. so you can follow it up. A lot of times he'll ask me for an idea and then he'll run with it because he knows if it fails it comes back to me and that's what happened last week with the crying baby. So uh, I am aware of the risk I'll be taking with the dog but um, I think Bill will have to understand that as well that somebody who's prepared to take a risk is someone that he should be going into business with and someone who's not afraid to put their ideas out on the table and uh, I'm certainly not afraid to put my ideas out there. Then she heads for the kitchen, opens the laptop, and she sits down, has a nice relaxing glass of wine at the table, and then knock, knock at the back door, and delivery is there. I'd be afraid it's going to be boring, to be honest. Humour is the couple arriving at the door, and he just expects her to put on a dinner, and she's after coming home from a day's work. That's the humour. And then she's inside having a glass of wine. He can be faffing around in the living room. I, I don't mixing find that drinks. funny at all. Sandra is a bit more conventional with her creativity. Her ideas have been done before. It's not funny at all. Say, for instance, it's a moment a young lad and he's ordering Chinese in his room. You could he's do ordering it. Chinese and the moment will kill him. I think we are going to hit all three requirements from Just Eat. You know, this is uh, our concept we're looking at. Is it's fun, it's edgy, and it's certainly unconventional. He's in his room and he's ordering the t and she's ready. She's. They're back into the old uh, Irish mammy business. They were asked to be contemporary and they're completely old hat. Let's just try and make the home a funny scene. So we could have smoke coming out of a, a pan. Very easy to do smoke coming out of... Connor knows how to do that, don't you? The two of them do seem to be working a lot on their own. They're like, OK, you go and do that, and we'll concentrate on the main work, which was nailing down the concept, which I didn't really like. That's good, cool, Joanne. I like that. Well done. I have lots of big ideas in my head, but, you know, there's no point firing them out there because I need more manpower. We have a V6 engine at the moment, and uh, if I wanted some of my ideas to go through, we need a V12. He just needs to put his paw on a laptop, so it's going to look like that the dog has made the order. Would you have any roughly rough idea on, on what kind of money you'd be looking at? I definitely wouldn't have anything like that whatsoever. The dog must be made of gold. How much? 500 for the handler. Oh. 250 for the animal hire. And 175 transport costs. Oh, wow. Well. 100 quid is just an insult. <laughs> How is a dog on a laptop encouraging people? I think Connor wants to target the doggy market. That's my play on it. With Team Spirit yet to decide on a concept, Team Zest have settled on the Irish mammy idea. Sandra is now tasked with visiting a restaurant that is part of the JustEat.ie website. OK, here we go. Ten essentials to an effective TV commercial. Meanwhile, the boys start working on their storyboard and script. I'm banging on the door. Yeah, right. Burton, your dinner's ready! There's no comedy yet. No, no. He's a, he's... Apart from her voice, maybe. Yes, yes. The concept that we finalised is Mrs Brown's boys meets Miss Doyle. Martin, like, you'll have more spuds. Martin, and... have a bit more. The mother is dishing up some gruel and he's trying to avoid it. Are you sick in there, Martin? And he's got all the leaflets in the toilet. Are you all right in there, Martin? The two boys seem to be so into their ham acting that they've completely forgotten the plot. Get up to your room again, so. This is turning out to be a complete cringe fest. When he's up in the room, then he actually... Gets, gets on his laptop and orders it. From everything that Just Eat wanted, the edginess, the innovation and the humour, I think we have it all encompassed in our, our concept, so I'm very happy. You select the time, you think you're very, very, very busy, you can actually select your time by going down. Well. Wow. Right, so you go down, down, you say 6 o'clock, you can have that deliver guaranteed. Team Spirits PM Eugene has also split his team. He has gone to a restaurant that partakes in the Just Eat website, while Connor and Joanne work ahead on a concept and a script. Then the kids said, I'd love pizza, Chinese for me, uh, mum wants burgers and chips. Um, Dad, it's your turn, so no pressure. Smoke bellowing from the oven. Without the smoke and oven there, it's, it's not funny at all, really. I'm not trying to be funny, I'm trying to communicate an ad. I know you want to get a clear message across, but you can do that with humour as well. And yeah. I think if we ever had to incorporate humour into an advert, it's new. If you don't get your dog, then we either develop this or we develop one together. It's yeah. not a case, Connor, of, you know, one versus the other. I never said it was. Joanne got into a bit of a tizzy because uh, I didn't like her idea, even though I said that I thought it was a very good idea. So do you want to read out yours now so I can try and help me develop further ideas? Uh, scene one. Family and the dog in the sitting room. The son is on the laptop. Connor was like a dog with a bone over his dog, Buster. All he thought about was the dog, all he talked about was the dog, and he didn't want to even open his mind to any other concepts because he had this dog on his mind. We need to nail down a dog. The shots for the dog will be very, very brief. 750 plus VAT she wanted, and then she came down to 400 all in. So we've spent, we've got three models. It's 150 and 40 of the printers is 190, so we have 110. 
what was your feelings on the dog? We were discussing on how we could perhaps afford the dog. I reckon I might be able to get it at 200 euros, which would mean uh, using one actor, we were thinking from a point of balance, um, having a mother and me as the son and then yourself as the delivery man. There's no point talking around, sir, because the best thing to do, Connor, is come back to me if there's a price that's reasonable for the dog. I mean, I'm not spending 300 or 250 euro on a dog. Looks like he's playing a bit of a political game. He never liked the dog idea that Connor came up with. Basically, he's going to let them hang themselves and he went off and did the easy jobs. It's very, very easy. You just take the first receipt okay. and accept the order. If he's not 100% behind the dog and he's not going well, to run with it, I don't want to be wasting my time. No, he just said to you, he's given you the power to negotiate. You've got between 140 and 200 quid. Now it's over to you to negotiate. He did give you that power, so right. I guess that is backing. Look, I never liked that bloody doggy concept. When you don't marry things up right with brands, and, you know, I made a mistake there with Guinness, with potato peeling. They didn't want to be associated with potatoes. I'm just having a look here now. I'm trying to scrape every penny of the budget here that I have. Um, if I could push it to, to even 200 euros, no problem. OK, Rita, so um, I'll have to knock that one on the head, unfortunately. Connor is probably disappointed that... Uh, uh, Lassie is out. It may have added some element of humour, all right, but uh, we just couldn't afford it, so, you know, it's the way the cookie crumbles. Could you tell me what the script is for tomorrow? Yes. All right, so you're ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Eugene, your dinner's ready. Get down here. Ma'am, I'm full. I can't eat anymore. Sure you will, and here's some more. A growing boy needs his food. So then the bath... He goes Then he escapes it. to the bathroom, and then she bursts in and is like, Eugene! What are you doing? Get up to your room and I don't want to see it till every bit of your dinner is finished. And then just, uh, Get up those stairs now! The characters are going to make the humour as yeah. much as the script. The director for the shoot is going to be Noel. The fact that um, this is very much Noel's idea. I certainly think I could make a good Spielberg. 5pm. Joanne and Connor are at their casting session. For the purposes of finding the right people, they have decided to use Joanne's script. The first line I want is, um, ah, Dad, let's just eat. Can I pretend you're right to I can be whatever you want me to be. You can't have your dinner till your mother comes home. Well, can we just eat? I'm starving, I'm getting impatient. Just chill out and uh, imagine you are at home. Ah, Dad, let's just eat. Kids, what do you want for your dinner? Kids, what do you want for dinner? I want takeaway. I want Chinese. Mmm, have you been cooking up a storm all evening? This looks amazing. Honey, you are amazing. <laughs> it's weird when you look at me and say that. <laughs> it's weird me saying it. It's two wonders your confidence, Connor, this. Oh, it's great. I'd sit here all day. Come on, just tell me I'm amazing. In Zest's workroom, while the boys conduct their casting session, Sandra fixes their storyboard. Morris and Noel are casting for an Irish mummy and a 30-year-old son. Excited, over-the-top mum. So here, you're frustrated he hasn't come down. Eugene, get down here now, your dinner's ready. Eugene, get down here, your dinner's ready. I'm not too sure whether she has a comedy aspect to her repertoire, but we'll see if we can manage it tomorrow. A growing boy needs his food. If all else fails, myself or Noel will be uh, dressing up in our dresses and wigs and rollers. Just to let you know, you're 15 minutes over and uh, those people have been waiting for over an hour. OK, okay. Very nice. Looking back at the door, kind of fearful. Then... <laughs> it's for you, is it? It is, yeah. One second. Hi, Sandra. Eugene, are you not eating your dinner? Ah, oh, ma'am, I'm full. I, I can't eat anymore. Ah, oh, ma'am. Daniel really gets into the role. I like his acting and I like... No, no, no definitely. It's situated at home, which is the place where you associate all takeaways, you know, getting your takeaway at home. So I think it's going to be good. 5.30pm, and with project manager Eugene returning to the rest of Team Zest, there is now a concern about the lack of humour in Joanne's family dinner scene. The concept in its current state. Yeah. Um, are you happy that it fits the brief we were given? No, we'll have to tweak it a little bit. We can put some quirkiness into it. The concept in its current state isn't unconventional. Um, it isn't very fun and it's quite bland. What if he did do that, that he uh, stuck his head in the oven and came out with the turkey on his head? That's no problem. Huh? We can do stuff like that. It's not that's a problem. mad, like that's unconventional, that's wacky. So, you know, if Eugene, Connor and Joanne's personality get into this ad wholeheartedly, I think it would be amazing. It'll yeah, come together. Day yeah. two always comes together. OK, guys, that's Thanks. great. Thanks. Day two of the JustEat.ie task. Today, both teams must film and edit their 30-second television advert. However, with neither concept completely nailed down,
the storyboards are more than likely to change. The director for today is Joanne. Uh, we just felt that she had a little bit more experience than either myself or Connor. Good morning. Hey, you are? Cormac. Cormac. I'm Stephen. Very nice pleased to meet you. you. Very well. Come on in. We're just completing the storyboard. We'll be able to go through it with you. All the filming must be complete by 3 p.m. today giving the editors time to cut and finish the advert. However, as Team Spirit's storyboard is now changing, there is little point in briefing their crew. Drawing is not my forte, I'm afraid. Okay, so it's a script rather than a storyboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. You'd rather some pictures? <coughs> Would have yeah, been nice. Is, yeah. yeah. So we have Mum, we have Dad, we have Teenage Daughter, and we also have Connor, who's going to step into the role of Teenage Son. He did mention that we wanted to get our faces on telly, so now it's his turn, so I'm proud to put him up on that pedestal. If he tries to say anything in the boardroom that, oh, you were trying to get your face on the telly, or if Bill stands up and says, well, look, why were you in the ad? I'm just going to say straight out, Eugene asked me to do it. Lots of passion, lots of energy, and let's have lots of fun. There's one director here today, and that's Joanne. So any questions you have or anything, any direction you need, you just speak to Joanne, and Joanne will give it to you. You say, Dad, look at the mess. Mom's on her way home, and you say it with a bit of, bit of feeling. You're, you're exasperated. We're going to have to make sure that there's, you know, one chief and two Indians today when it comes to directing, so I'll very much have to keep that under control. It's very much kind of Mrs. Brown, uh, you know, as the mum. Mrs. Brown ask, OK. This one we're quite clear and, and focused on, on achieving what we've set out to do. Zest's location is Knockline, County Dublin, and construction company MD Knowles' directorial debut begins with giving his lead actor some notes on how to play this scene. Three, two, one, three, two, one, and you're not going to hear it, but that's when, oh, Mom, you know, dinner, uh, Martin, dinner's ready, yeah? We stop? When you want us to stop, you shout cut, yeah? Yeah, OK. Yeah. Cut, cut, cut. Yeah. Action. Cut. That's where you're hearing the call from, OK? I'm just getting the swing of this. After 14 attempts to get the right performance, Noel notices a problem. His stay-at-home mummy's boy is wearing a wedding ring. Noel really hasn't a notion about directing. He didn't know when to stop the camera, when to start the camera. He had to be told that, you know, it was cut. The wedding ring and the white shot. Yeah? Yeah. See, you happy so, with that? Do you want to do it again? Just once more one, yeah. All the shots they had done up to the time when he discovered that the actor was wearing a wedding ring, they all had to be redone, so it was a complete waste of the morning's work. How are you getting on now? Uh, just a bit of a slow start, to be honest. I always wanted to be a pizza delivery boy. And what you're doing is you're walking to the door. You do... Yeah, we good to go? Yeah, so if you just step, I want you there. Three, two, one, action. Good evening, sir. I have your online takeaway order from Brilliant. just eat.ie. Save the day. Cut. Thank you. I think we should get this pickup shot going down the corridor and then no, close up. We're going, to have, we're going to have a number of angles. Yeah. 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 You yeah. go a little bit higher with the bags, Eugene. Feels like I'm doing weightlifting here right, with the okay, bags. Yeah, like, it has to look natural. It doesn't feel natural if I have them up so high. Good evening, sir. I have your online takeaway order from just eat.ie. Brilliant. You saved the day. It's kind of a matter of fact. No, well, we still want emphasis on that because it's. Yeah, but it sounds too scripted. Connor's trying to get his inputs into directing as well. And I have to say, when he does try and put an input in, they actually make sense. But the other two senior members are completely ignoring him. Good evening, sir. I have your online takeaway order from JustEat.ie. Brilliant. You've saved the day. Great. Thank that you. Better, yeah. Brilliant. Well done. Well done. 11.30, and Zest are setting up for their second scene in a new location and with a new director. So you have four seconds to sit down, get this there, and then you have about three seconds to open the laptop. Brilliant, and you're excited. You're going to get fed here. You're going to get fed. OK. Perfect. Dean, straight after this, we're going to be recording um, Maureen's voice, OK, for the voiceover. Morris's project manager just simply butts in and does everything himself. He designated the role of director to Noel, and yet he's up there directing himself. What we're doing is we're going to record your shrill from downstairs. Your projection is going to be up. Merton! Get down here! Your dinner's ready! 
you have to have a clear communication line and having the one director is the, the, the key to that. It's just at the moment I do need to have some creative involvement. Martin, your dinner's ready. Get down here. Martin, your dinner's ready. Get down here. Try not to pronounce the T. So it's, Martin, your dinner's ready. Get down here. Martin, your dinner's ready. Get down here. Or your screech, Martin, your dinner's ready. Martin, your dinner's ready. Pan up, Cormac, so we have more of the picture in the background. Yeah, that, look, that looks nice. Dad, I'm starving. What's for dinner? Cut. What do we feel about a different shot for Connor? Oh, I'd love a Chinese. Connor, can you try and neutralize your accent with hers? The accent's getting stronger, so we can try and. It's your brother and sister, and you're meant to have the same accent. Fugin comes in and starts directing things she doesn't mind, but if I come in and, and start making any sort of suggestions, she says, Connor. Connor, I, I'm the director, this sort of stuff. No, 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 we're doing, we're doing this shot oh, first. I understand that. OK, so let me finish. She speaks to me as if I'm her 16-year-old daughter. Um, I'm not her daughter. You're the director, like you should. I am the director, and we give one wide. Seriously, what is this? I feel like I'm back at home, and, you know, I've left my kids at home, and suddenly I'm here, and, you know, I've got Connor to deal with. Right, go on, whatever you think. JustEat.ie task the candidates with promoting the benefits of ordering food online. Zest, however, have decided to incorporate a scene of their mammy's boy making an order from the toilet on the phone. This time, just whisper that we can hardly hear you, OK? Yes. We'll do a very quick rehearsal okay. before we take the shoot. Connor, we don't have time for rehearsal. Just shoot the scene. Sorry, sorry, but we need a rehearsal because I heard you the lines. Sorry. Apologies. You can't plan things. Obviously, there's things inside at the moment going on that, you know, we haven't planned. The comedy is where the father is going to be trying to prepare food and there's food going all over the place. I'll repeat. The comedy element is... Action. Cut. The client has asked for funny. It's as funny as a funeral. And they wanted to put their own personality into it. Well, we have it. Boring. Ordinary. Safe. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Is that cut? Yeah. Cut. OK. Thank you. 3 p.m. in Zest's South County Dublin location. While Morris and Noel wrap up the filming, Sandra leaves for the edit to record the voiceover and pick music. The plan for the voiceover is that, um, obviously, we want to have some sort of a neutral accent, and I do have a Cork accent, so I'm going to have to decork it. What's your line? Ma'am, I'm full. Time up at Team Spirit's film location, and now all three head to their edit to start crafting their finished advert. It's all in the editing. Recording there, so in your own time. With over 670 restaurants to choose from, order takeaway the smart way at justeat.ie. How was that for time? That seemed pretty good. I'd go, I'd go one more. With over 670 restaurants to choose from, order takeaway the smart way at justeat.ie. Both teams have until midnight tonight to edit their 30 second adverts. Andrew Eugene, how are you? Pleased to meet you. I suppose, in reference to justeat.ie, they, they're fun, they're creative, they're edgy. Spirit have done the opposite to everything that's been asked them this brief to date. So it's really down to maybe some of Eugene's legendary creativity to pull this out of the fire tonight in the editing suite. <laughs> any shot of a man in a kitchen covered in any sort of cooking ingredients I always think is funny and people will laugh. I don't think the comedy element was completely hilarious at the end, but uh, I definitely think it was light-hearted, which is what we were asked to do. Sandra has decided, as well as her voiceover, she wants library music to work with their images. No. No, that's too slow. Uh, Hip-hop power. No. <laughs> Just eat, Danny. Like that. At the set, as soon as the uh, actors were prepped, there was no need for three of us, do you know? Yeah. With over 670 restaurants to choose from, order takeaway the smart way at justeat.ie. I like that one. With over 670 restaurants to choose from, order takeaway the smart way at justeat.ie.
Yeah, I think it's good. Like, the music is perfect with what I'm trying to achieve. Just Eat asked both teams to make their adverts edgy, funny and contemporary. Morris and Noel arrive at the edit to see if Sandra has weaved these elements into their concept. We listen to loads of jingles and a lot of them are quite long, which would take up the duration of the ad, so we're not going to have music in the background. So can we hear the one that, what I thought we'd put a sting at the end as opposed to a jingle throughout? With over 670 restaurants to choose from, or to take away the smart way at justeat.ie. And that's five seconds. Yeah. Mm. Well, what? No, I just think, no, it's, there's a lot going on. It, didn't With yeah. the music. So, it sounds it, it just over radio. My voiceover was recorded initially when I arrived. The lads felt that I sounded too professional um, and too corporate on the ad campaign, so they've decided to go for something uh, more kind of fun and quirky. That was a close one. Order takeaway the smart way at justeat.ie. No, so scrap that. OK. OK. No. No. Morris and Noel thought the idea was absolutely hilarious yesterday. Now that they're looking at the shots in the edit suite, they realise that it's not half as funny as they thought it was. Hey, just finish your dinner. No, keep going. Just hope that uh, we've got 30 seconds of good content uh, when we finish. Merton, are you not eating your dinner? Hey, Ma'am, I can't eat anymore. It's going to take a lot of clever editing to bring this task back from the brink. Sure you will, and here's some more. Perfect. OK, cut. The following morning, and with both adverts cut, it's now time to present them to the JustEat.ie judging panel. Ema McCormack, Head of Marketing, Matt Brady, Chief Marketing Officer, and Brona Walsh, Communications Advisor. To begin our presentation, I'd like to show you our television commercial for Just Eat. Was a close one. Order takeaway the smart way at justeat.ie. Over the past few days, we've been designing a television advertisement for Just Eat, which is light-hearted and fun in keeping with the nature of the brand, and also one that clearly communicates the message of the benefits of ordering online. So we hope that you enjoyed our advertisement, and now I'd like to open the floor for questions, where our team will be happy to answer. Thank you. What's the difference in this ad from using the phone and using the online service at Just Eat? He thought he was trying to be smart by ordering it on the phone, but she was listening at the door and that wasn't smart enough. So the choice was go straight to the, the only choice available, justeat.ie, which is a smart way to order. And do you think you communicated clearly the variety that's available from justeat.ie? We were depicting a contrast between uh, what would be traditionally bland to ordering a takeaway. Um, we were really uh, focusing on that to depict you know, the, variety, um, the variety of food available. Did you speak to any customers just on the street to do a little bit of... Uh customer research gets well, insights. Well, well after, uh, over the filming over the two days, we were talking, obviously, about the brand and its benefits to various people that were in our surrounds. And they were talking about how good the service were, was and how beneficial it was to, to them. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eugene, and I'm from Spirit Marketing, along with my colleagues Joanne and Connor. Over the last few days, our task has been to create a 30-second television advert which fits in with the light-handed nature of JustEat.ie. Dad, I'm starving. What's for dinner? I'd love a pizza. And you promised Mam that special meal tonight. All roast will something up. Ah, Dad, Mam's on her way home. Ah, Dad, can we not just eat? Just eat. I'll be the master chef tonight. Good evening, sir. I have your online takeaway order from JustEat.ie. Brilliant. You've saved the day. Fantastic. Wow, this is amazing. Ah, oh, honey, thanks so much. I just eat, darling. Click, hey, your order's on the way. Just eat.ie. So for us, it was all about the family, mum and dad, and the two teenage grown-up kids. We did have one very deliberate strategy when creating our ad. We omitted the telephone. We did not want to portray, convey, or depict any sort of message that would say that ordering online a second to using the telephone. So I'd like you maybe perhaps to explain to me um, where you communicated that Just Eat, first of all, offered choice. 
Well, in relation to um, the dialogue, um, you initially have the daughter saying, oh, Dad, I'm starving, I'd love pizza. And then she quickly moves on to, and you promised uh, Mum that special meal tonight. But to be fair, the, that special meal could also have been pizza. You didn't specify that there is choice on Just Eat, other than just pizza. So I've been using the telephone for years to order. Do you think if I saw that ad for the first time that I'd be in inspired to run off to a search engine and search for Just Eat's brand name? I do, absolutely. I think that you're very clearly left with your brand in mind, both visually and verbally at the end of that ad. And but have you motivated them to go and do anything? I think we've certainly motivated them to, to log on online, absolutely. Just Eat is mentioned seven times in this ad. I think it's, it's mentioned both strongly by the branding, but it's also backed up subtly in the dialogue. Humour is very subjective. Do you genuinely feel that this ad is humorous? Personally, I found it quite humorous, and I do think the storyline works. Um, I think the storyline is quirky, it's unconventional, and it's fun. Thank you very much for your presentation. I think it works. Could we have done more? You can always do more. So let's just hope and see and go with a positive attitude. I do think that Connor is unwilling to take risks. I always say he's got one foot on either side of the fence just in case, and I always think he's thinking about the boardroom. I don't think Joanne is a great listener. For me, it's just orders, 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 and uh, I think she should lead by example and actually do things rather than just talk about doing things. You can go into the boardroom now. Noel has admitted that strategically he stayed in the background for the first six to seven weeks and that was a strategy and it was done cleverly. I'm in this competition for one reason, one reason only, it's, it's to win it and I feel I'm good enough to win it. I think that this week Morris should be the one to be fired because he said that he developed his business plan after getting in here because he wanted to be an apprentice and not a business owner. This isn't about fame, this is about being the winner at the end and winning an apprentice or a, a partnership with Bill Cullen. Good afternoon, candidates. Good afternoon, Bill. You had to produce a 30-second television advert to communicate the benefits of buying meals online using justeat.ie. We'll start with Spirit. Eugene, I believe you rushed to the plate as PM. I felt that I could lead the team and coordinate everything and get it done effectively. And how did you find your team? The team was OK. We had a couple of issues along the way. I wouldn't think any of us kind of Sean in this task particularly well. So, who's going to tell me about the ad, Joanne? Dad's cooking dinner, not going very well. Uh, the son comes in and says, ah, Dad, can we not just eat? And then he has his eureka moment and realises that he can order online at justeat.ie. And whose idea was that? That was my idea. You thought this was original? Uh, no, absolutely not. Connor had an original idea, and, um, but we exhausted it. The lines that, and couldn't Connor? afford it. Uh, yeah, I wanted to incorporate some humour in there, and um, the the son gets up to adjust the telly, and um, while the son is up, the, the dog actually places his paw on the laptop and uh, places an order. But I thought it would get across a message that ordering online with Just Eat .e is, is so simple that literally the dog can do it. I believe that the idea could work and uh, single-handedly I went to uh, push that idea right through to fruition. It just it came in above budget and um, it was a non-runner for that reason. You didn't like the dog idea, but you still let him chase it. I said to him I didn't think a dog fitted into the Just Eat .e branding. I didn't think it fitted in to have a dog in the ad. Connor felt very strongly about it. and Connor he... feels very strong about everything. You know, as PM, I think you have to listen to everybody's... Yes, and then make your decision. And I did the make boss, the decision, And you Bill. decided to go with him and give him the day to work it through. I didn't give him the day. I gave no, him until that's 2... That's what I heard. I, uh, at 2.30, Bill, uh, when I was on the way to uh, Ratgar, it came across that uh, we weren't able to get the dog for less than the budget that we had, and I told him to knock the idea on the head. At 2.30? Yes. It was a bit later now, Eugene. It was. Was it? I think it was about half, half four. four, yeah. Exactly. Who was directing the ad? I was, Bill. How did you do? Take some time getting used to uh, directing a cameraman and getting the right shots. And you had a storyboard? Yeah, without pictures. Is this yours? That's, that's mine. These are supposed to be pictures. Did you not know that? Did none of you know that? Bill, I've never worked with a storyboard. I mean... Have you ever worked with a storyboard, Connor? No, I wasn't familiar with how they operate at all. Have you ever worked with one, Joanne? 
Yeah, I have. I mean, I, I knew the boxes were for pictures, but I can't yeah. draw, so I decided just to... Which of course you can draw. Could have used matchstick men. Well, that probably would have been the height of it, coming from me, that's to all be you honest. Need. Yeah. And don't forget what your CV says. It says you have a certificate in television producing and directing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you get that all wrong. Yeah. Brian tells me there were three directors on the day. Not you. The cameraman said that Connor gave him the most relevant information and directions on the day. I was getting quite frustrated throughout the morning. I thought I had some good concerns and opinions um, that I wanted to convey to Joanne and they, just, they were falling on deaf ears, Bill. So at times I did bypass Joanne. I think the cameraman and the sound man was getting quite frustrated um, with the lack of direction. Team Zest, how did you get on? Well, Bill, I stepped up to the market to be PM. Noel came up with the concept. Two people in a house, a mother and a son, and we really um, emphasised on the comedy factor where the mother is preparing the, the son's dinner every evening and the son was really tired of the boring old food and he wanted to order something different. Did you have any other ideas? We had a domestic uh, s s concept with Sandra, which was where the couple came home and then they're sitting down for some food. The female of the couple decides, says, whips up something quickly in the kitchen, and it's all the comical value of, oh, she's having a glass of wine while she's ordering online. And then there was two concepts uh, which I brought to the table. The first one was uh, the same scenario, domestic couple sitting on the couch watching the soaps, and out of the laptop uh, uh, pounces four different chefs. It goes on to them ordering from one of them, and the chef is preparing behind. And then the last one was uh, having just a couch uh, and relocating a couch to different restaurants. What was the one you were saying there about four chefs jumping up and down? That sounds great. Yes, it was. Uh, I think. So it, who shot that down? It's clear now after we edited the ad. We saw exactly what you can do in an editing suite. We didn't know at the time. Do you think um, that might have been better than the normal domestic thing? Yeah, I think so, yes, in hindsight. No, Why did you let it go? Um, I let it go be due to my inexperience with TV ads and special effects. So who did you appoint as director? I was appointed as director. Um, felt that. Uh, you well, know you're coming out of your shell on this one, aren't you? It's time for it. Of course it is, yeah. Yeah. Um, when it was my concept, I'd be best uh, directing it. So Jackie, didn't all do a good job? He was dreadful, Bill. Mm. He took 14 shots of this 30 year old guy with a wedding ring on, and uh, he was supposed to be a single guy living with his mother. It was something that I didn't do before. Um, you know, I put my hat in the ring, and, you know, uh, it, it was difficult, yes. The presentation. Morris, mm -hmm. you said that you had done market research. I said that we were talking to people over the, the two no, days. You were asked, did you do market research? And you said yes. We had talked to various members, including the actors, on day uh, two when we were at lunch. Service. At lunch as yourselves? Um, with the actors and camera crew. You had two actors? And the camera crew and the sound engineer. This is spoofing the end, Morris. Correct? Um, correct, Bill. And Sandra, you're a very good presenter. Thank you. From getting tired of you doing all the presenting. It's something that does make me nervous, but um, I did want to do the presentation, um, and um, that was it. Who better to send somebody, to send to the, 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 the front, somebody that's proven, that's going to deliver something clear and concise? Personally, for me, both ads were disappointing. Nothing original. Domestic situation. Anyone could do it. I asked you to be creative. I asked you to be original. Didn't see any of that. Spirit. Just he said you tried to cram too much into the ad. And I'm sure you've heard this phrase many times from me. Less is more. Zest. They were disappointed to see a phone in your ad because that conveys a mixed message. So Zest, Just Eat said it was memorable, but it was memorable for all the wrong reasons. Spirit, for that reason, by the skin of your teeth, you're this week's winner. Sunway Holidays have given an excellent award, and there's an opinion on this side of the table that this trio should take the prize because it's not really clear that you guys deserved it. Anyway, you're going to get a three-day stay in the Princess Oyeza Hotel in Lanzarote, where you're going to be pampered in style. You'd better come back here with some vitality. 
you better come back here with some determination. Determined to get the results that we're looking for. Off you go. That was the closest task we've had so far. Yeah. Jesus. Fucking hell. Zest, your ad was all wrong. And the nail in your coffin was featuring a phone. I'm disappointed in that. And Morris, this is your team. This is your result. So now you can go outside and remember that when you come back into this boardroom, one of you will be fired. These people are all in their thirties, and I just don't see the passion, the eagerness to get the job done. And they keep throwing up this inexperienced chestnut. I mean, you got to realise. It was amateurs that built the Ark, and professionals built the Titanic, and look where it got them. If I was you, I would have uh, gone to Lanzarote yourself. And you say to me, why do I treat you like a child? One of the Oh, wow, thank you. I think Eugene thinks he's some sort of big fish around here. Um, he thinks he's very important with his free really walking up and down the beach, but I think the women see straight through. <laughs> it's a great way of getting rid of you out of the competition anyway. Like, you know. I thought it was Morris who was taking the hole for himself. Hello? Anyone? It's as early as the concept stage. That's true. We've, we've messed up. We weren't experienced enough and we weren't risky enough, you know, to say, well, this is definitely possible. If it's truthful, it's truthful. And fact is fact. Fact is fact. Ask those three to come in, please. Of course. Bill, we'll see you now. I told you that advertising was about persuasion. And you didn't persuade me or Just Eat, which you're at. Why? Obviously, we're very disappointed to see that the ad just didn't work. Um, I suppose there was a, a number of concepts on day one. I personally felt strongly about my concept. Um, I did bring it up four times, and maybe if we had gone with one of the others, it would have been more beneficial to, to us in the long run. I think, uh, you know, at this stage, it's easy enough just to pinpoint which idea would have been better. We went with the wrong concept, but I think it's down to inexperience. Look, you've seen ads all your life on the television. It's, we see the ads all our life, and you see the end product. But you don't see, it's like seeing the cake in the cake shop, but it's difficult to take the ingredients and, and create that. You know what looks good, you know what works, you know what sells. I believe Sandra's one would be less contemporary than the one that we, we were going for, so that's why that was stricken off the board. You've seen or heard of Brendan O'Carroll's Mrs Brown, haven't you? We have. Yeah. It's 20 years old. Yes. We were looking for something, what was the word? Starts with contemporary. O. Contemporary. Original. Original. Not having the experience and having the 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 the, the, um, uh, the balls the balls to run with something that uh, we were unsure of whether it was even capable of. But to succeed in life as an entrepreneur, you have to have the Leo Rodi. Yes, indeed, and I, I believe that we did um, we do we did take risks in the element that we had in 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 putting the phone. There was various risks that we took that we that didn't pay. But you off. can't use the system with a phone. If you look at the scene, um, he was ordering from a, a generic order uh, takeaway, and it failed. The, I, the, the, the story... But it doesn't come across like that. Indeed, we failed. We failed to communicate And all you did was, you know, mix up everybody in knowing what way it could be done, give the wrong message to the people who were going to see the ad, and particularly hurt Just Eat. Part of the brief was that they, they wanted to enforce that you were going from the phone to online. So we were trying to make that journey and we didn't do it. We failed, we failed miserably. No, we this was your time. idea. You thought it was hilarious. It was a mistake. And I can't argue the point that it wasn't a mistake here when I know right and well it was a mistake. But at the time, I didn't believe. I thought it was funny and I was happy to run with it. But now you know it's a mistake. Yes. Just Eat is all about various types of food. Mm. To go right across the spectrum. And that was completely lost. When I went to the editorial suite, I recorded um, a voiceover for the ad campaign which said, with over 670 restaurants to choose from or to take away the smart way. When the guys arrived, it was scrapped. What happened to that voiceover that you recorded? It was scrapped. Why? 
um, because with the, the humour in the ad, my voiceover was too professional. Both myself and Morris uh, felt that uh, the voiceover itself, now we did ask, you know, what you thought yourself, Sandra, and you're very slow in, say, you know, calling us. You didn't say, right, whether you agreed with us or not. You no, know, when he came back, right, I was after recording the voiceover, um, I felt that I had done a good job, and when he came in, he listened to it, and you both went... You did agree with what we did, did in the end? Oh, absolutely, yeah. of course. But that's what you do in a team, Morris, at the end of the day. But obviously I did question it and I did say, is, there, is it so wrong to have a corporate end to an advertisement? And I did question that. But I mean, at the end of the day, if it's two against one, I'm not you, going to you, argue you for did, one. No, 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 no. This, this is different I, to Sandra, what you agreed. No, I you genuinely agreed. did say that. Yeah, you know, you, you, you said, you, you asked us what was wrong with being having the professional voice and That's we suggested yeah and we suggested it was quirky and you agreed and you liked it you were there at the voiceover and you said that sounded very good and so and now that we're in the boardroom you seem to be changing sides I'm not very changing. I, 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 Listen, I, Morris, no, I'm I not did, changing my side I'm I, merely making I, a point I, sorry I, can I, I just say something yeah, on, please finish it. I'm merely saying that there was an original voiceover recorded you did come in you were stunned and said that it was very professional sounding um, and I said to you, was it not okay to have a corporate finish to a company? Uh, and then when you said, it's a quirky ad, and I said, grand. Sandra, I keep getting the feeling, from what I'm hearing, that you still are acting as a secretary. Yeah. Apart from the presentation, what else did you do? On day one, um, I came up with the suggestions, and um, there was one in particular that I really liked. They were all shut down, carry on. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then after that I went on out to visit um, the restaurant in Rathfarnham. So you did a visit to the restaurant, full stuff? Morris, who doesn't deserve to be here? But I think where we fell down in this one was the creativity and really thinking outside the box. And uh, for that reason I'd say Sandra, because on the first day uh, the main concept that she wanted and she was bullying for and she said it was, she went f four times for it, was a concept that I believe had been done before. When it comes down to uh, creativity, I just think that it was lacking from Sandra it, on day one. It was one. the existing concept that we lost on, not the concept that you wouldn't listen to. And I brought it up four times for a reason. Well, and just it explain. Hit just, every single box. Okay, and I believe it's I, done before. You're saying I don't deserve to be here because I, you didn't listen to the creative ideas that I had and you went to the concept that lost. No, 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 no. I, I believe that it, the creativity it's coming from you... It's an interesting strategy be, there. It, it was the same in the last task. It's the creativity that comes from... I believe that myself and Noel were, were task, a lot more creative. In the last task, it was my idea creative. and we lost. And you said that because it was my idea, I should have been the one that lost. I really felt as though that there was more coming from myself and Noel than there was from Sandra. And sure, uh, like, I believed that she was willing... No well, I, he's asked my opinion. Noel, who do you think I should for? Um, myself and Morris gave more in, re in relation to creativity and I feel Sandra uh, gave less and for that reason I feel Sandra should be fired. So I brought up the ideas, but OK. You brought, we all brought up ideas. I haven't, we haven't listed all the little ideas that we brought up, but you have because you're very good at pointing out the stuff that you did well. And, and that's great for you, but in this scenario, the creativity side of it, that's what I'm suggesting, that it was just a bit weak. I have a choice to make on this task. And because you're all so bad at it, I have to take your body of work into consideration from former tasks. So, Sandra, what have you shown me through the whole process? I've never hidden the background. I haven't sat in the fence. And do you think you've let yourself down badly on this task? No, Bill, I didn't leave myself badly down That's on That's what the this. lads think. Well, you know, obviously, they're going to say that, you know. Everyone's, Why? Well, everyone's Why trying obviously? to protect themselves. Everyone's trying to protect themselves in this situation. So, no... What's been said there is that you choose Sandra to be fired because you're trying to protect yourself. I'm not trying to protect myself. Um, from day one, I've been absolutely open and honest. I haven't spoofed, waffled, or, and I've called things as, as it is. I feel that, you know, when I make a mistake, I admit it, and I learn from it. And you believe you've done more than Sandra to justify your place here? Yes, I feel that I have, I have more to offer. I have, I have a proven track record here and I feel I have a proven track record outside here. I'm here for one reason only and that's to win this competition. I feel I'm good enough to win it. Well, Noel, you need to admit for the first six weeks you're a very quiet boy, strategically so. It wasn't strategically so and I wasn't six weeks. So, Morris, why shouldn't I fire you? I'm not a person that hides in the shadows. I'm up there with passion trying to uh, push the team to victory. You all have your own perceptions, and I have mine. And right now, this all comes down to whether or not I see myself investing, not just in you, but in your businesses. 
I can assure you that I'm a proven track record, record in business and obviously in the restaurant business. It's um, a successful business and obviously it's um, an add-on um, to the existing business um, and a new venture. Bill, I've only worked... I'm trying to get you to change my mind. Well, I've only worked with market leaders. Every business that I have worked in has been market leaders. Each business that I've worked in, I have contributed to their success. And I know now I'm on the journey to start my own business with you. And I have no doubt that that's going to be a success. Business in the sector that I'm in is an extremely tough sector. I've managed to grow, grow and even double last year. The proposal I'm putting on your desk is something that I've an expert in, that I'm working a long time in, and I know it inside out. You know, if I was to believe all that, you guys would be going to Lanzarote, not sitting here. Morris, I don't mind that people like you talk to talk, but you don't know when to stop. And the worst thing is, you don't even realise how it makes people switch off. It might be a small thing to you. But it does make people switch up, especially me. It's ten weeks in, and I'm still struggling to see the Morris that you tell me you are. I do see some very good qualities in you, but I'm having to drag them out of you. I really am, and I'm sick of you not taking risks, because I've said from the very start, the winner of this process will be running the business I want. So for me, this is probably a choice between two people. Sandra and Morris, you're both in the food business. And that's something that I have an interest in. Sandra, on every task, you stand out when you're presenting. But it's not enough. And I keep asking myself, why can't you push through enough to make that impact on me? So for that reason, Sandra, you're fired. OK, thank you. We're in the last lap of this race. And I'm not going to say it again. Potential is no use to me. Business plans are paper. Action gets results. There's 200 grand at stake here. This is task 10, and I get nowhere. There's no sign of them lighting that fire. I just don't understand it. Restaurateur Sandra is the tenth casualty of the boardroom. At the end of the day, this is Bill's decision, no one else's. Um, and I suppose he wants to pick someone who he can see in business with. Um, so, you know, he obviously wants to take a gamble on someone who hasn't a successful business. I thought my neck was... It was half severed inside there in the boardroom. I thought it was gone. Delighted to get another week, another crack at it. I think be able to look at Noel and say, Noel, you're just too late. You, you should have done this earlier. <laughs> very close so it's disheartening to come out at this stage but you know um i've done my best and i can hold my head high. five candidates remain and the search for bill cullen's new business partner continues next week on the apprentice i'm going to give you the ultimate challenge and action say lovely little car the Joanne is out of her depth here just do an archway of balloons the pair of you could have been from mars a big big gorilla that's a little bit confusing to some people. It's just carnage at this stage. Let me see what you are made of. He's a snake. Make me an offer. You're in the last chance saloon now. Bill would rip his throat out for that. Excellent. You're fired.